Well, voters in Jordan are heading to the polls for parliamentary elections. These are pictures from the polling stations in the capital, Amman, where people have been casting their votes. But there are concerns about a low turnout and campaigners, candidates sorry, have been campaigning for the last final hours. Well, let's go live to Zaina Awad, who's in Amman for us now. Hello to you, Zaina. Kamali, good morning to you. People have started coming uh, to cast their vote at uh, 4 GMT. Now, we're standing outside a school that has doubled up as a uh, voting uh, poll station. We've seen people come in and out uh, for the last couple of hours. But as you mentioned, really, the key question is how many people will actually come out to vote? There's a lot of disenchantment among the Jordanian people about the political process here, despite the push by the government to get people to come out and vote. And our guest today, uh, Hisham El Bustani, is a political analyst and an author who shares some of this disillusionment. Hisham, why? Well, I think today's election is part of the democratic makeup, um, an allusion to pretend that Jordan is a democracy and there's a huge amount of participation, where in reality, Jordan is actually an absolute monarchy. The so-called constitutional reforms that has been enacted in the past year yeah, and he guarantees this uh, in one way or another. So all the powers are now invested in the king. The parliament historically, or not historically, in the past 20 years, has been a very um, weak parliament. It has not been able to push for legislation. It has not been able to push for reform or monitor government action. Actually, it has been like a bed for corruption. We have been, we've been saying many reports in uh, local journalism about uh, how many, uh, you know, government contracts, millions of dinars of government contracts given to MPs. So the parliament actually is a medium to transfer or distribute benefits uh, from the ruling regime into the different social groups that constitute the country. This is not a healthy political sphere. There's no political programs. We've seen the campaigns today and to, over the past, you know, months, the campaigns for the elections, there's no real political programs, all is mainly focused on the pictures of the, uh, the, the uh, people who are running for the elections. But one thing that we've heard a lot about and we've seen is the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a potent force in this country, has decided to take part after nine years of boycotting. That's surely something positive. And, and why have they made that decision? Yeah, well, in, in Jordan, I might say that all political parties are very, very weak. Uh, except for the Muslim Brotherhood. This runs all over the Arab country because of different, you know, historical factors. I think after the uh, Arab revolts, the Arab Spring, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has, in a way, lost um, a lot of its political leverage. I think the decision now is to re-enter uh, the political arena. The Muslim Brotherhood have boycotted the previous two elections. Uh, but now I think they're coming back because they think it's their fair, you know, it's better for them to participate and to be part of the system than uh, to be left out in the open. Hisham, very interesting to hear your thoughts. There you have it. Lots of concerns among ordinary citizens uh, about what, how impactful really this election can be. We're going to have to wait and see as the day progresses how many people come out to cast their vote and what the, uh, what the parliament here in Jordan will be looking like. That's it from us here in Amman. Kamali, it's back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, Zaina.